My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to talk to you about the benefits of magnesium on our overall health. In this video I will summarize the most useful points, uh, which are th firstly that the majority of chronic illnesses are driven by chronic inflammation. With regards to the heart, atherosclerosis, which is hardening of the blood vessels, is the process that eventually leads to heart attacks. And this is caused by chronic low-grade inflammation. The inflammation is caused by lifestyle factors such as smoking, poor nutrition, especially processed foods, lack of exercise, lack of good quality sleep, and perhaps most important of all, stress. As the arteries harden over a number of years, it becomes more difficult for blood to get to our vital organs, such as our brain, kidneys and heart. As these organs start getting deprived of blood, they start malfunctioning. Any agent, therefore, which can improve the blood supply to our vital organs can offer potential benefits to our health. Magnesium, in that sense, has the following beneficial properties. One, it can help relax smooth muscle and therefore relaxes our blood vessels, allowing blood to get through more easily. Secondly, it is anti-inflammatory. Thirdly, it has some anticoagulant properties which again help blood to travel through the heart and blood vessels more easily. What is magnesium? Magnesium is both a mineral and an electrolyte. It is the fourth most abundant mineral in the body. It is necessary for electrical activity in the heart and the brain and is also a cofactor in more than 300 reactions within the body. The recommended daily allowance is about 400 to 420 milligrams for men and 310 to 360 milligrams for women. However, our daily intake is far less than this. We should be taking 400 milligrams daily, but the majority of people take between 240 and 370 milligrams at most. It is therefore estimated that 75% of the population in the Western world takes in less magnesium than is recommended. It is also important to understand what happens to the magnesium once we have ingested it. 30 to 40% is absorbed from our gut and also our small bowel. Some of it is excreted through our kidneys, but then the kidneys try and reabsorb it, especially when we are magnesium deficient. Magnesium is also interesting because only 1-2% to is available in the blood. Most of the magnesium is in bone, 67% or so, and within the cells, 31%. Hence, when we look at measuring magnesium levels in a routine blood test, we're only measuring 1-2% to of the total amount of magnesium present within our bodies, and this is why the blood test is not a good marker of total body magnesium content. Why are we magnesium deficient? The majority of us are magnesium deficient, and here are the reasons why. One, we take in less than we should. This is because of modern farming methods which serve to deplete the magnesium in soil. Processing depletes magnesium further. Two, we absorb less of it from our stomachs. Reflux disease has become hugely prevalent because of the bad food that we're being fed, and a large number of people are now on chronic proton pump inhibitors to reduce acid production. Unfortunately, acid is necessary for absorption of magnesium, and it is well recognized that chronic proton pump inhibitor usage is associated with an increased risk of magnesium deficiency. Carbonated beverages also reduce the absorption of magnesium and can compound the problem. Three, we use a lot more magnesium these days. We are using up a lot more magnesium now compared to 100 years ago. Remember, magnesium plays a role in over 300 reactions within our bodies. Stress, which is ubiquitous these days, results in increased magnesium breakdown. Lack of sleep also results in increased magnesium usage. There is a lot more sugar in our food these days and magnesium is required to break sugar down and this again causes depletion of magnesium. Number four, we excrete a larger number of um, amount of magnesium compared to before. Coffee, tea, pharmaceutical diuretics all cause us to excrete more magnesium in our urine. In particular, diuretics will actually stop the kidney from reabsorbing magnesium. You can therefore see why we as a population have become so deficient in this vital mineral, electrolyte. What are the effects of magnesium deficiency? 
the signs and symptoms are usually very subtle and often we put them down to the rigors of modern day living, in particular tiredness, anxiety, sleep disturbance, depression, restless legs and even heart palpitations can be caused by magnesium deficiency. Hardening of the arteries can cause elevated blood pressure readings and improving magnesium levels can help with all these symptoms. In addition, it can also help achieve better control of blood pressure and diabetes. How can you confirm whether you're deficient? This can be very difficult because the blood test is virtually useless as it only measures the 1-2% to of magnesium in the blood and does not give us an accurate assessment of total body magnesium. If the blood test shows that the magnesium levels are normal, then you cannot be sure because it may be falsely reassuring. But if the blood test is indeed very low, then it is very likely you are deficient. A better way to measure magnesium levels is to measure the content of magnesium in the red cells. This is called red cell magnesium count. Unfortunately, few laboratories, uh, particularly in the UK where I'm based, offer this measurement routinely. Another way to get a more accurate assessment of body magnesium stores is to measure the content of magnesium in the urine. Again, this is not a routinely available test in most laboratories. An easier way is simply to increase your magnesium levels and see if you notice a difference. So why don't doctors recommend magnesium? Well, there are several reasons for this. One, there are no large-scale randomized trials to provide an evidence base for its benefits. This is largely because most large-scale trials are very expensive to run and therefore are sponsored by pharmaceutical companies. No pharmaceutical company is going to profit from magnesium, and therefore there is little incentive in studying its benefits. However, a search on PubMed reveals several small-scale studies which indirectly point to magnesium being essential for our good health. It is also difficult to measure, and the most commonly used method, which is a simple blood test, is hugely flawed, and therefore can often give normal values even in those who are very deficient. And most doctors don't understand this, and therefore they may do a blood magnesium and say, oh, your magnesium levels are fine, when actually the blood test is not reliable and the patient may still be deficient. Thirdly, most doctors are brainwashed by the pharmaceutical industry into believing that the only remedy to any problem is a set of pills. How do I increase my magnesium levels? Well, there are several ways. One, improve intake by avoiding processed foods and eating organically grown uh, magnesium-rich foods from local growers. Almonds, spinach, cashew nuts, peanuts, all contain lots of magnesium. Magnesium can also be absorbed through the skin and magnesium oil, which is available in many health shops, can help when applied topically. Similarly, the addition of an oral magnesium supplement can greatly boost magnesium levels and reduce symptoms of magnesium deficiency. 2. Increasing the absorption of the magnesium through the gut by reducing reliance on proton pump inhibitors. If you have reflux, alternative agents such as H2 receptor blockers do not cause magnesium deficiency and could still provide relief from reflux. 3. Reduce the breakdown of magnesium by maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Better sleep patterns, management of stress, regular exercise can be very helpful. Also, reducing sugar intake is very helpful. 4. Reduce excretion of magnesium by avoiding diuretics such as coffee and tea, and this can help. Can magnesium be harmful? Well, I would always recommend that you seek your doctor does counsel before taking any supplements so that they can advise you after evaluating your medical history. Truthfully though, at recommended daily allowances, magnesium supplementation is very safe. The only caveat is if you have severe kidney disease, in which case I would again recommend taking your doctor's advice. Some people do develop a runny stomach on certain preparations, particularly a formulation known as magnesium oxide. Magnesium glycinate is in particular uh, well tolerated in those who have issues with other forms of magnesium. What preparation and what dose is best? As there are so many preparations, it is beyond the scope of this review to go through each one uh, of them. In general, magnesium oxide, which is the cheapest, most commonly available, is the least effective and best avoided. 
I have used magnesium taurate, 125 milligrams twice a day, with great success in many of my patients. Similarly, magnesium citrate at 200 milligrams daily is also very effective, as is magnesium glycinate. Magnesium supplements are very easily available at health food stores and online suppliers such as Amazon. I hope you found this post uh, useful. And I would love to hear your comments as to whether you have used magnesium and whether you have benefited in some way from it. Thank you so much.